The following program is intended for mature audiences. On this Merry Christmas on The Truth Be Told, Cardi B drops the follow-up to Bodak Yellow. And is it as hard? And we get a lost verse from the great DMX. (laughs) So we go over who had the best bank account verse. Joyner Lucas, Lil Wayne, or King Los? More fire, more fire, more fire! And we got album reviews from... Travis Scott and Quavo. Bag. King Los. Bars. And Weezy F Baby. No. And now some artistic ignorance from Barry Ross and Infidel Castro. You're now listening to the Truth Be Told podcast from Trillmatic.com. Trillmatic.com. Feliz Navidad! We are back with the podcast called The Truth Be Told. If you didn't know, you better ask somebody. Merry Christmas, Trillo! And Trillionettes! That's right. Yes. We are back. We are back. Episode 97. 97, bro. The Truth Be Told podcast. Oh my gosh. From Trillmatic.com. You should know what you're listening to. If you are listening to us. Yes, you should. We're you recording should. this on Christmas, although you're probably going to hear this the day the after day. Christmas, yeah, trying yeah. to run in and get your, uh, your, your last minute gifts. Last minute, your, yeah. your, your after Christmas gifts. After Christmas gifts, cause everything's on sale. Everything else. So everyone's like, <laughs> I for, I, I couldn't get it yet. It's running late. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But the reason you're, you're running late is because you want to get that sale. Right. The, and ain't no wrong with that. The funny thing is though about, <laughs> about this, about that time period is all that, Candy, all that like Christmas shit drops off by like a lot. Shit, well, 50% by, like, off. Like almost. 50% off. And sometimes yeah, like around there. Yeah, about 57% little, off. Yeah. Around there, if not, give or take a little. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So. But it, it, you it buy your shit for next year. Exactly. <laughs> There's people who do that. They get their gifts already at the, the, uh, the day after at, Christmas. The day after Christmas for the next year. And they're right. like, Christmas is ready to go for next year. Right. You know, you're going to get a gift that is a year old. Right. But at the same time, you're gonna get a gift, so right. be happy. And you better just—they better hope that you don't get that gift in that time. That right. you got a whole year of possibly getting that if you want it. And if they go, get, if they got you that, and then you get it sometime between that year, you know, that right. before Christmas, they're gonna have to get you another gift. They're gonna have to get you another gift. They're gonna have to. They're gonna uh, pay attention, right? <laughs> uh, how did how? I mean, how was your Christmas, man? I, I, I'm not gonna lie. This year, um, I spent a lot of cash this year. Uh, I, I spent a lot of cash because I don't normally. Sp- Spend this much on Christmas, but I got I got a little bit of stacks yeah. right now. Boy. So uh, I got I got stacks. You know what I'm saying? So we, we got we got we got your regular Jim Jones over here. Right, 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 right. Boy. So I, I just spread a lot of Christmas cheer around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got I, to. I, I make sure to get everybody something yeah. that meant something to oh, me in my life. I appreciate I appreciate the gift, bro. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yes. man. You know, you you my boy. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. My boy Reefer. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm one of those guys that is gonna get you one of those after Christmas sale <laughs> gifts. <laughs> You my boy, man. You my boy. No. <laughs> right, right. It's like the 28th. You're like, Merry fucking, Christmas. It's, <laughs> right. No, it's been fucking hectic. So, you know. Right. Oh, but, yeah. It's been definitely hectic. I'm not even sure how we even it's probably recording the, this podcast yeah, right it's now. Probably it's probably one of the most hectic Christmases right. of my life. This week has been wild. I haven't had time to do anything. I feel like Kevin McAllister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. shit is going right. nuts. Like, uh, I'm home alone. Right. No, like, <laughs> No, the funny thing was, is like, for those of y'all that's listening, we we're reviewing a couple of mixtapes that came out today. today. So we had to like cram these mixtapes. So we're basically going to give you like a kind of one listen review uh, yeah. on that, if that makes sense. Even though I've listened to them like twice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we, yeah, we definitely had to like push that into these hectic schedules, man. So we hope that you, uh, enjoy it. If this is your first time listening to podcasts, make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Google yes. Play. Uh, all the Android apps, all the Apple apps, whatever you listen to. Um, YouTube. That's right. Make sure you subscribe on subscribe. YouTube because we do got some video content on there now. And hit the notifications. Definitely hit the notifications. You want to be on, you want to be in the in crowd. Right. You want to know when shit is dropping. We will drop it. You will know. Right. You will listen. The YouTube crowd is different from the pod, like it, the actual it podcast. Crowd. Oh, it is. It is from just the, the audio listeners. Yeah, it's a different. And, and, we we actually have been putting only audio on YouTube for the longest, so right. it's similar, but it is it's definitely different. We're getting feedback from the YouTube, right? We're getting uh, uh, people who are definitely just becoming big time fans, right? Just off of YouTube, and I'm pretty sure 
a lot of them probably think that it's just a YouTube thing. Right, right. Not a lot not of knowing that we're doing audio that podcasts. That we do audio exactly. podcasts for, you know, for everything else, all the other yeah. platforms. If you can't sit down and watch YouTube and you're listening to this podcast, that's fine. That's you're cool. getting to pretty much the same content. Exactly. Right. But just so you know, in the future, we will be doing exclusive YouTube content. Yes, video. In the very near future. So look out for that. Um, let's get into this damn podcast. We're gonna take it back, aren't we? We're gonna take it we're back. We're gonna take it a little back to what? The year, the year 1997. This is episode 97. We're going to 1997. So we decided to do something a little different this time. Uh, cause we usually go through Everything. just some of the music yeah. that's been going on, but we're gonna give you my, my personal five best albums from 1997. Shrew's gonna give you his personal five best albums. Am I? Yeah, you are. Okay, okay, I am. Yes. Let's, so let's go. It's back. in the contract. I got to do back. it. Let's. No, let's, let's <laughs> I mean, he said it's in the contract. Let's hear. Let's hear. I want. Let's start with you. What are your five favorite albums from 1997? Top to bottom. It, five. Oh, so you one. you want it in a, in a order? Yeah, yeah let's you get want in order, it in man. order. Okay. Well, I have to. The, I do have to say we we discussed this that there is there's six albums in this right out of the top five because there's two that are kind of in the same level. And kind of the same label. Right. You know, same artists in a sense. So it's like, uh, they kind of go hand in hand. So they're they're together in one. Right. So we will start off with that duo. Right. Which is Master P Ghetto D. Because I've seen that coming. And TRU, True to the Game. Right. You know, those two, very impactful. Very uh, Jam the fuck out of both of them. Mostly Ghetto D, but TRU had its. If you don't know, hits. Ghetto Double D album. was the album that had Make Em Say Oh. Na 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 na. <laughs> Man, it had it, it had a lot. I'm the Colonel of the motherfucking tank. That's the that's the explicit version. That was the Colonel. Yeah. I'm the Colonel. That was yeah. mystical, right? Because there was no. That was that was Master P. Oh, that was Master P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's him when he his first first line of his verse. That's because 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 the radio version was I'm the Colonel of the Golden Platinum Tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, they had they had they had some good ass tracks on there. We had Captain Kirk, We the Money, Make Him Say Of course, we had After Dollars No Cents. Right. One of my all time favorites, Pass Me the Green. Right. One of it's classic. Right. I mean, pass me the green. I need some weed with my hand to see. Right, right. That's that's almost like he took that from Matt uh, from Tupac. You right. know what I'm saying? A little bit like it's a little bit of Tupac in there. Bourbons and Lax. That was Bourbons another scene. Yeah. Definitely. And we had I miss my homies. Right. You, that, that's like an all time. That's. I mean, if keep if, in mind, it's like if you had a funeral, uh, that's the song that you probably play. Right, right. You know. Keep it real. Since then, it's probably been like a good twenty or so tracks about missing homies. Could that have come out from rappers over the Oh yeah. Over, over oh time. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. Right. I mean, so, so Ghetto D was up there. Right. TRU, you know, TRU was fucking that was the shit as well. No I mean, no limit records. No limit was, was at probably like the beginning of their run. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. The time period. Oh yeah. I mean they they that that shit was one of my my fa- actually not one. My favorite track on that album though, I will give you my favorite track on that album as well, is Torture Chamber, Sea Murder. Right. Shit was fucking dope. Fucking I love that shit. But to go to the next, what I would have to say for the next number movie, four for Sharif. Number four. Uh Don't There's an Harmony. Part of one. Right. Fucking dope. What's Thug, some of the Thug singles love. that was that was on that album? Thug Love, Tupac. Thug Love. Off right. top. Because I mean, Tupac was on there? Uh, not just because Tupac was on there that I love this album. Bone Thugs and Armor I've loved since they came out. You know, right. since they came out with you know what I'm saying uh, uh, creeping on the come up. You know what I'm saying that was before you know, East 1990 Eternal. So I mean, people found out about them mostly through that one. That album before that, you know what I'm saying No Surrender, which I mean I saw them in concert as well. Like I mean I talked I, I saw another group that Outcast I seen what we talked about, but I seen Bone also. Bone that out that concert was dope. Right. I mean, shit. Busy Bone on there on stage, pulls out a joint. It's like light up. Fuck security. They ain't gonna do shit. You're kind of doing his voice like him too. I, I had, I had to, <laughs> that's so why I did it. I had to give you high voice. Had to get a little high voice for it, man. Hey, you yeah. know, he was a fan favorite for a while. Oh, definitely. I mean, him and Crazy Bone are probably the ultimate fan favorites out of Bone Thugs. Right, right, yeah. Not to disrespect Lazy and Witch right. or Flesh and Bone. Or Flesh and Bone, who was hardly ever there. Yeah, but, was but there. he was still a member. 
Uh, but I mean, yeah. I mean, look into my eyes was one of the singles on that. Look into my eyes and tell me what, what it is you see. Tell me what you see. Right. Like, man, they had some dope ass songs on that album. Right. It wasn't about a whole lot of singles, mm. but it had that one and it had Thug Love, which is probably one of the greatest, you know, Tupac collaborations mm-hmm. with you know with a group. I mean, Don't Thug and him fucking killed it, just like them and Biggie killed it. You know? Right, right. But. That was on Biggie's album, which is also on there, on the list. Which I would have to say that it is next on the list. Yeah. Definitely. That Biggie, which had that song with uh with Bone Thugs and Harmony. You know, right. his bone in Biggie, Biggie, right. his bone in Biggie, Biggie, you know. That they they fucking I mean that album was fucking dope. We had hypnotize on there. I mean this was the first this Kick was in the first door wave in the four four. Oh, man. Right. This was the first album without, you know, or after his death, right. you know, that they released. I mean, it had 10 crack commandments. Right. Fucking classic. I mean, going back to Cali, I mean, Notorious Thugs, that's what we were talking about. But yeah, that, that to me, that was my favorite as well. Right. I mean, it had Bone Somebody's in there. got to die. More Money, More Problems. All that, yeah. Classic album. What's Beef? Yeah. My, uh, a great ass Biggie album. After Biggie. It has to be Tupac. You know. Are you still there? Are you still are you still motherfucking down? Right, right. Man, that, that album A posthumous album. Yeah. Right. It was it was his first album that he didn't have nothing to do with it. Right. Like no creative uh, uh input or anything like that. But these were like his song like his leftover songs and stuff. Uh yeah. oh yeah. Like songs Which is kinda interesting in that he didn't put do I don't know when do he did do for love. That's one of my favorite Pac songs of all time. That song. Yes. Yeah. The animated Pac. Yeah, that shit was claymation yeah. type shit. Yeah. Fucking was dope. Yeah. Love that shit. That video was awesome too. And I mean, Sucking I wonder if up. Heaven Got a Ghetto. Right. I mean, that came out with that with that as well. I mean, it was a great album. I mean, one of my, my favorite tracks was When I Get Free. I mean, part one and part two. Right, right. Two parts. And I mean, just all in all. I mean, Pac Embrace... Southern style in this album. Number one on my list, you know, there's no doubt about it. Three Six Mafia, Chapter Two, World Domination. Right. I fucking love that album. It's kind of interesting because you put it over a Pac album. Yeah, yeah, I did pick it over. Three Six took over, hypnotized mind. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, Profit Posse, it just, it just, it really grew on me. And uh, Chapter Two, World Domination, it, it came out. It had uh, Tear the Club up. The remix, like the the revamped version, right, right. Pieces, uh, Turtle Club ninety seven. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. That's what it was. That's called. what it's called. Yeah. yeah, and it also had uh, Late Night Tip, right? You know, which was a classic as well. I mean, Gangsta Blue Lord, Infamous Goose, the Juicy J DJ Paul. I mean, they just made a great song. You know what I'm saying? About you know, Late Night Creeping. You know right, what I'm right. It was like it's like a fire. I mean, they. They, they made a fucking big impact at that point in my life. I, was, I remember taking vacations, you know, going to Mexico and shit, and on the ride, driving the whole way. And, and when I got to Mexico, you know what I'm saying, when, whatever we did in the road, I mean, I'm with my Walkman. <laughs> Cassette player, Walkman, right, right. listening to my 3 Six Mafia. You know what I'm saying? The end, and Chapter 2, World Domination. I mean, they had, I bet you won't hit a motherfucker, hit a motherfucker. I mean... Ain't your friend right. who got them nine gun flat three six in the morning? I mean, body parts too. I mean, when they came out with a body parts song, it had everyone on there with their squad, and that shit was always a classic. Fucking dope. They also had a classic neighborhood hoe, DJ Paul. Right, right. Yeah, which yeah. is also very reminiscent of uh, Hot Boys's uh, Keisha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we also had Lord Infamous, rest in peace. Uh, anyone out there? You know what I'm saying? That was a dope ass track. We just got me high with the outro. Fucking fire, front to back. Right. I mean, all those albums I list, right. front to back. Loved them. Made an impact. Now that I took a long time in explaining mine, let right. me let me let me hear what your top five were because I, I kind of I wanted to I, I did want to wait through the podcast. I want to hear what you got to say. Right. Well, I'm gonna just tell you like this. <clears throat> My top five. It's a little different from yours. You know what I'm okay. saying? Um, number five uh, was... is a tie between... Like mine. Okay. Yeah. It was a tie between Mr. Cow's Unpredictable. The Man Right Chill. Great album. Uh, that was like one of the first albums that like... 
I was like middle school. I was like, oh, I, I, I like this shit. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. Um, unpredictable, unpredictable. But then it was also Busta Rhymes with when this when this Disaster Strikes, Strike, Strike. which is a real probably one of his best albums uh, to me personally. Me too. I That's agree. the hands with my eyes can see. see. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. The, Dang- the dangerous, dangerous. Yeah, it, there's a lot of fire tracks on there, so I, I couldn't really decide between uh, mystical and busting yeah, on. So I, 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 we did talk about in the last episode that they was spitting back and forth, and I was like, this, I, I can't decide between them, so I just put them together. Hey, why not? You know what I'm saying? So why not? That's my number five. Uh, number four, Young FMC. Missy Missy Elliott, super, super duper, duper, duper like, very impactful as well. My With goodness, a, I can't stand the rain in it. Hit him with the heat. Hit him with the heat. Yeah. The thing about, about Missy Elliott was unique. she was she was definitely unique. Unique. Yeah. There was nobody doing what she did. Even now that she dropped that video, uh, I think last year, uh, and her video was like wild and crazy. She's always had crazy She's always videos. Been, oh, definitely. That's made her stand out. Of course. And then she, you know, she raps, she sings, she produces. Timberland was shining on this. This was like Timberland had probably like his... I don't want to say the super height of his career, but definitely he was stepping into the game pretty strong. Aaliyah was you know there. Saying? Aaliyah was there. Genuine. They had a whole Genuine little B club man. player. Yeah, yeah. Like they had a whole little cheese. Nicole Ray to type you. shit. Now. Yeah, that yeah, that Dell squad. Yeah, that that did come a little bit later. Uh, and uh, keep in mind, one of my favorite verses from Missy is the uh, the Nicole Ray song where she's rapping on the end. Yeah, that's like amazing. But shout out to Missy. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite artists. I love that album as well, man. That was uh, I owned it as well, so I agree. It's up there. Number three, which at the time period was wasn't really on my on my on my uh, on my on my radar as much, but a little bit later it did get on my radar, and it's Twister's Adrenaline Rush, and this album to me was fire. was fire. Yes. I know we talked about this whole Twister and Busta Rhyme shit the last episode, but. Twister's Adrenaline Rush is my is one of my favorite. The song Adrenaline Rush with uh, Psychodrama. Oh my god, it's fucking bananas, bro. Even my to this day, god. no matter what, it, it you stands the test of time. That you see, I'm doing my hand right now. I'm doing my hand like Donald Trump. Even today, Twister still rules. That's that, that's he, the album that had emotions too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it had overdose. About. It had overdose. It, yeah. Get it wet. Yeah, get it wet. The original because yeah. they had a part two later. Yeah, they yeah. did. But the original was always the original was always better. I mean, this shit was right. that album Unsolved Mystery. Right. Unsolved My Mystery, God. fire, fire. These songs were dope, but if you haven't heard them, <laughs> let me put it this way: one thing I got to say is that if you haven't heard them screwed, you can need to listen to those songs screwed. Oh yeah, those yeah. songs screwed. Yeah, psychodrama screws off, off the chain. Point. Yes. yes. All right. And <laughs> continue. Let me not interrupt. Yeah. Continue, sir. You're right. Um, <laughs> number two. Was I know a lot of people don't like this album, but it's actually to me minus some of the the, the kind of fluff that's on there. Hmm. It was Jay Z's In My Lifetime Volume One. Uh, this wasn't really Jay Z. I think this was Jay Z trying to find his footing in the in the main in the mainstream. Yeah, but there was still dope ass tracks on here, like Where I'm From. Yeah, uh, Imaginary Player. He was still touching like on the samples. He was still spitting lyrics, but I think he was still trying to find his footing as far as mainstream. It wasn't until he did Volume Two. That where he really kind of figured found out it, found it he found it you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. where you could have the blend of the street shit and mainstream and mainstream you know what I'm exactly. saying but I this agree. is a good album from Jay Z like it's got a lot of good songs on here and then number one for me was Biggie the Taurus B.I.G. Life After Death I know you had him in your list and you pretty much said some of the same things that I was gonna oh yeah I was gonna say about about that album it was it was a good quality album and I really honestly believe that if Biggie would have been alive for that, and they push and Biggie pushed that. Was he was right. there. Oh yeah, it's been him and Pac. Like both of them at that point, if they both lived, they they their albums would have. I mean, it would have been the rap game wouldn't be what it is right now. It would've, no, there would shit would have been different. Yeah, things would things would definitely been different. Things would have been different, but it did happen the way it did. Very unfortunate, right? Definitely unfortunate, man. But we, we, uh, that, that's pretty much the, the the hottest albums that we have from uh, yeah. 1997. So go check out all those albums, and go check out the rest that we didn't mention because there are some good ones that we didn't get to. Yes, we're definitely gonna link up hiphopgoldenage.com's link yes. in the show notes so you can go check it out. Enjoy, your girl. <laughs> yeah, had a flashback. Sorry, <laughs> taking over the female rap game. 
baby biz, baby Gizero. <laughs> queen of the Bodak Yellow. Possibly the new queen of rap. Cardi B has recently released her new single with uh, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. 21 Savage. Uh, yeah. If y'all, if y'all haven't heard this song yet, this song is fire. You're missing out. You're definitely missing out. Okay. Where are you at? It's, I guess her official f- next single. Yeah. Um, I'm glad too. It's a good, it's a hot ass second single. You have to come up with a second hot single. Like you can't, you can't slip. Yeah. You got to follow up with, you know, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to follow up to a number one hit, Not hit single. One, you know what I'm saying? Number one say sensation. Like right. you got to think about it. That shit took off and took over. Right. So to, to backdoor that shit. Right. It's hard. And I think she might have. I mean, the beat is fucking disgusting. Right, right. I love that. Fucking let's, beat. let's, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about that. Bartier day. Cardi. <laughs> Bartier Cardi. Bartier Cardi. Um, I'm actually surprised for number one to the point where I'm like, is she writing these lyrics? You it know makes, what I'm saying? It makes, it makes you wonder. Right. It does. I mean, cause that whole, in this day and age, you don't know. Yeah, you really don't. That whole little, part where she's like we're walking with the bitch we're walking in your click you know what i'm saying yeah. she kind it kind of sounded like sauce walker a little bit yeah you know what i'm saying from the sauce factory you know what i'm saying if y'all don't know who that is that's like you have sauce walker you got uh i can't remember his name but he, he signed to uh he signed uh to Wiz khalifa's label uh um, I can't taylor gang it. yeah he signed to taylor gang uh, and they they kind of rap like that a little bit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know if maybe they you know might have had a little bit of input to help make the track just more fire. Even if they just inputted that those those couple of lines. That's I mean that's just like that's a hot that's like a hot part of the fuck yeah the song. You know what fuck I'm saying? Yeah, that's what, it's like she's snapping. Yeah, she was snapping on this shit. She's she snapping. She it was impressive for the fact that I didn't think she. I, I honestly believe that. That hit was such a big hit that I didn't know if she was going to be able to contend with herself. Right. I'm like, you're competing with yourself at this point. Once right. you do that, you're competing with yourself and you have to follow through. Right. I didn't think she could. I didn't know if she would. Right. You know? And fuck. I, 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 it's, it, not, it's not a track that you listen to and you're like, I grew on me and then it got better. Nah. First time I heard it, I was like, okay. Right. Okay. Like, there yeah. it is. Yeah. No, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, this is fire. Yeah. yeah. She fucking got it. She fucking went with it. Like, right. And it just makes me think, what the fuck is her album going to look like if, if she's well, coming with this well, they, they nonstop? Might, they're already kind of getting on her talking about she's she's talking about Offset too much in her rhymes. Well, she did. She did. I, I, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. she's had the, the, the Motorsport, which yes. is kind of banging on the radio right now. This song where she's kind of, you know. Hey, she's in love. Hey, I, I seen her response on her Twitter, and she's like, "Fuck y'all, I love him." Yeah, there you, you go. You know what I'm saying? And I, I didn't like, even see that response, and that's no. what I said. She's it's the love. realest it's fucking it response. Is. She was like, "Fuck all y'all." You know what I'm yeah. saying? She said, "She said and I like that." That's she a literally great said out of her mouth, the, or on her Instagram or Twitter, or whatever it was. She says, "I'm gonna be saying his name till I die." The <laughs> last words in my out my mouth is gonna be offset, bitch. <laughs> and I was like, "All that's right, right. That's, that's right. That's, that's a." That's, that's, that's a down ass hey, shit. You can't down. fucking hate that. Hey, that's that's love, right? There. I guarantee you, offsets like thumbs up. And you know, fuck yeah, <laughs> thumbs you know, up, Cardi. You know, hey, you know how many people aspire to have someone that is that down? Yeah, the people that are I wish I had a chick that they're, they're the, the, my last words out of mouth Maybe. was like, "Nick, you, you." Yeah, and she just dies. <laughs> we fuck <laughs> Barry Ross. <laughs> Fidel Castro. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, last words. You know what yeah. I'm mean? saying? Yeah. But, you know, she, she, she's definitely in love. They're just married. Right. You can't, you can't knock her for putting that. Hey, is it whack? Is she fucking putting something out that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? At least she's Maybe. not doing like a lovey dovey. Yeah, she ain't even saying? putting it's it all like yeah, exactly. mushy and shit. It's kind of hard. She's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fucking offset. I right. turned out offset. I'm right. putting it on offset type shit. It's like, well, fuck. Offset's going kind of hard right now, too. So yeah, I'm just so saying, like, like, offset is probably like, I'm like, I'm feeling my sale. If I'm feeling my sale, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, right. You can't knock that shit. You now, know I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to see in hip hop, like, people who are together in a relationship, right? 
and they're yeah. actually doing it like that, like well, loving each other. I think it's on the tracks. great it's too bad. for Cardi because uh, Cardi, she doesn't give a shit. Like you can't say anything to to like hurt her. She doesn't nah. give a fuck. You know her what I'm saying? response says it all. She doesn't care. She's, she's not like, trying to impress love, nobody. Fuck you. Yeah, she's like yeah. fuck all y'all. Fuck you know all y'all. Exactly. But my question is though, <laughs> what do you think her 2018 is going to be like for her? Boss. Boss status when it comes to female rap game, I believe. You think they're going to push? Are they they going to push Nikki out of the way and Cardi's going to be the? I don't think they're going to push her out of the way, though. No. Nikki's not going to get pushed out of the way. It's going to be hard. It's hard to literally push someone out of the way unless you're literally in a beef, like like going head to head and you fucking. You think a beef is going to happen? It's it's still brewing. Whether they work together or not on a track. Who knows? They weren't in a booth together. Right. I don't think they were in the studio together. People, and this, I think too today, the fact that they, like they, they they do shit in their own area. Right, like, right. Oh, I'm gonna send you my shit. Right, they send it email via email <clears throat> type shit. You you get that? You don't actually work with the artist, you know. So you know, it's kind of like the the. I don't think they work together still. I don't think they were in a room together talking, chopping it up, like right. saying like, "Hey man, I, I like your shit." No, I, mm, I don't think that's happened. Right. So I think the beef is still there. You could kind of still hear it in their lyrics, <clears throat> sub- subliminally. You think so? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, they kind of stun a little, little bit. Like I'm harder. I'm the yeah, hardest bitch. Well, yeah, exactly. That they is. They I can't really. The rest that, of my sons are I open doors for the rest. Right. Like Nicki Minaj right. and saying shit like that. Yeah, it's kind of some things where it's kind of like, you know, who are you really talking about here? You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you know, you know I, we can't. We can't. Let's not. Let's not try to push a beef to happen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not Even though people okay. want it to kind of happen. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like it's rap is yeah. like UFC. On that note, I'm not saying that they're literally saying that to each other, but it sounds like right. It, it does sound like it. It sounds like it because who else are they talking to? You know? Right. I, I don't think they should. They should. I wouldn't be surprised if a beef popped off though. I'm I not gonna lie to you. But I do think that's gonna win it. I, th- I think Cardi has has the, the the wave in her favor. Yeah, and the hot listen. It's it's been known and done in in hip hop that whoever's hotter. Usually ends up coming out on top because they got the wave. You yes, know what I'm yeah. saying? When you're riding that wave, if if the beef happens at that moment, if they want to get rid of you, they will. Like we will, we will. The culture will get rid of you. They, they you know will get that room and they will sweep right. you under that rug, right. and you will become a, uh, a, a TMZ or a E <laughs> Network, you know, what I'm saying Entertainment Tonight story. Right. About where are they now? Right. Type Damn. Shit, you know, shit. Yeah, shit, that shit happened. Shit. It does happen though. So it's like. I do got to give props to Cardi just for, just for coming in coming in strong. Oh yeah, I, I like that she got Twenty One Savage on there. I really like the beat, the beat, the disgusting. beat bangs. I like the, the flow. I like how she's rapping. She sounds like a veteran. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She, she sounds like she's like been she's, in the game for like 15 years. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? She's like, it's, it's, she, it's, she, there was no stutter. Right. It's like not only are albums to me uh, broke down in like freshman, sophomore, junior, right. you know, type shit. I think singles come out like that too. Right. Especially when you're new, when you're, it's your first thing. That's that's your first. But everybody thing. has like a you have like, like a, junior, right? a like hot junior. moment, and then it fades. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's hard to keep that like sustained oh, yeah. for a long. Yeah. That's why you gotta give Drake his props because he kind of was hot, but he kind of kept it sustained yeah. for a long oh, yeah. time. He kind of found you know that he found that area. Sweet spot. Where, yeah, the sweet spot. There you yeah. go. And you can just stay in that sweet spot, and right. he couldn't. He, he can't miss. But eventually, beat. everybody does fall off and fall to yeah. the wayside. It's yeah. always a new. So that's why Nikki needs to watch out because Cardi is riding a wave that could possibly push her out the way if she don't play her cards right. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that 2018 is going to be really good for Cardi though. Yeah. You know, Car- hey, how about you? You think it's going to be? <laughs> I'm gonna party with Cardi. Cardi. It's gonna be a- I'm gonna party with Cardi. It's gonna be year of Cardi. Yeah. The year of Cardi B. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it might be. But well, shouts out to Cardi B though. Yeah. Shouts out to Cardi B and shout out to Twenty One Savage, man. Yeah. Shouts. Shout out to Twenty One <laughs> all day. Twenty One. Twenty One. Yeah. Your boy, Earl Simmons. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to go there. Okay? Uh, Earl, Earl Simmons. Earl fucking Simmons. You're Earl damn Simmons. right. Yeah. So, the uh, dog, Damien. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dark was, Man X. Belly. Dark Man X. That's yeah. what it, that's what it, that's Grown what Man right? Bizaway. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really get into that shit. Hey, <laughs> hey. I portray DMX in freestyles with my homie who does right. be real. Right. So, yeah. it's, it's fun. I do DMX at times. Uh, if y'all don't know, um, what um, is that? a DMX lost verse, uh, hit the scene. If you ever heard 
uh, yes. Kanye West, uh, real friends from his Life of Pablo album. Mm-hmm. Everybody, when that song came, I think it came out before the album, if I'm not mistaken. People were like, "Oh, Kanye's getting back on the shit or whatever with the glue." And apparently, there was a verse that was Felt done. Like it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, there apparently was a verse that was done from DMX on that track. I'm not really sure if DMX was there with Kanye when he did it, or supposed to be on if it. Swiss Beats was like, "Yo, do a verse for this." You, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll put it on the album if Kanye likes it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever the case may be, a DMX verse. I think somebody hacked. Them and the DMX verse basically got on the internet of, of this, uh, this, the song Real Friends, uh, which is a J favorite. Yeah. Um, if, what did you, you heard it. What did you think of DMX on this song? Honestly thought that it wasn't that bad. Like DMX, yeah, I was like, not bad for DMX that everyone has already written off. Right. right. You know? And I was like, I've never written them off because I'm, I'm a big DMX. I'm fan. always checking for like when there's like I'm, new DMX yes. songs out. I go, I go check. I am it. like, oh, he's featured uh, yeah. on, a, uh, on a remix, yeah. of underground shit, or he just he's like, one of those guys that you like stop what you're doing and yeah, you listen. He's to one it. of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I <laughs> big fan. Right. You know, got it all his albums. You know, minus probably the last one maybe, but. I got pretty much. his first like three or four albums was like I think I got his last this is godly how many does he have I think I got like five got like six I think I got five yeah. I think I got five albums so and then I got all the Rough Rider ones so it's right, like right. those are like honorable DMX albums so right. I I can't say that I was like blown away right I wasn't blown away I was, and I wasn't can't say that I was highly impressed right. but I was very satisfied to see that he still had. You know what I'm saying? Bars that he could spit and be on point. You know what I'm mean? like, Not like he's not garbage. He ain't right. gonna, like, I'm glad he didn't spit something that I'm like, I'm disappointed. Right. I heard it. I'm like, come on, dude, come on. Right, dude. right, right. I, mean, I feel what you're saying. I'll, yeah. From, like, you get that a lot from older rappers, it's, too. It's like, yeah, yeah. why did this leak? Like, right. it's like, this just paints a whole bad picture for the new age. People are going to look at them like, yeah, that's where you, you, your people are at. And it's like, no. Right. You know, but he held his own. He did good. I like. He he definitely has changed. It's not definitely the same old DMX, right? You know what I'm saying. And I'm talking about like the beginning DMX because he has progressed as he's gone anyway. So right, right. it's not probably as far from his last shit, you know, that he's put out. But I wasn't mad at him. I was happy. I was like, I was good. To, it was good to hear. Yeah, it was. It was good to hear DMX, and particularly on this song because I've heard a couple of like DMX songs in the in the past, yeah. like rec- more recent songs, or whatever. Yeah. And th- and some of them are okay. Some of them yeah. are you know decent or whatever. And then some are just like mm, I'm not really feeling that. But I kind of felt like he's, he he fit in here just with the concept of the song and the topic or whatever and the style of beat or whatever. You know, I think with that beat, a lot of people could probably shine on there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like DM, well, couldn't shine on there. I feel like DMX, I feel like the legends would do well on it. Like if you brought Nas on there, it would have been yeah. dope. If you'd have brought Jay Z on there, on there, it would have probably yeah. been dope. But I really like DMX just because you know DMX and the type of rapper he is. Gutter. He's gutter, but he well, also is very introspective. Raspy. You know what I'm saying? And yes, definitely. Like slipping is one of those songs where you you know you think of like DMX and he, he's like you know slipping a fall I can't get up. Right. So this the song Real Friends, mm-hmm. and he's like kind of trying to tell you about like real friends. I think that DMX probably has a a good idea of what a real friend is at this point in his life. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So oh, I'm sure this should have been on the album. I I personally feel like this would have been a great addition on the Life of Pablo. Like if he had just came out the song and then. When the album came out, it was like, oh, it's featuring DMX. That would have been like a good one. It would have made it more lit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would have just made it just more like, oh, shit, it's DMX, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it would have. <clears throat> I, think, I think that kind of goes for anyone to feature DMX at this point. Right. You feature DMX, you're going to be like, oh, shit, DMX. Like, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. You know, it would be interesting to hear DMX on like a Kodak Black song. <laughs> like this Rolling Peace song that... I want to hear DMX and 21 Savage, honestly. I don't know the D. Uh, listen. Both ro- that, oh, that's, a DMX that's and who, 21 Savage? That's what we have compared to DMX. Uh, imagine. Know, like, imagine. Not like his raspy, right. not his voice, not. but when it comes to his raw right. and his uncut lyrics where he just don't give a fuck. He says shit that other artists don't say. Right. That is like the new DMX. DMX. Imagine DMX, DMX on Mad Stalkers. <sighs> where... <laughs> With fucking Offset, oh, Metro Boomin, and Twenty One Savage. Okay, what? Yeah, I think that would have been interesting just to hear DMX in the in the. That would have been dope. Just coming in. Uh, uh, yeah, just the background. Uh, uh, 
Where are my, my dogs dog? at? <laughs> yeah, I would like to hear DMS on some of this. On some of this, this. maybe we should. No. Maybe some of these new artists are trying to find a way to fit DMX into there. Why isn't none of these new guys trying to feature why. DMX? Everybody's trying to why. get. You see, like people, they're trying to get like you know your Nasas and your Jay Zs. You know, we they they feature them on it, right? Or Eminem or somebody like yeah. that. Nobody's sure really going DMX. for DMX. No, no. I think Twenty One Savage should be the first. Twenty One Savage should do it. it only obviously DMX. This leak, so yeah. there was a possibility he was working with Kanye. But if someone's gonna put him out and keep it, then yeah. put it out for something for him to run with as well. Yeah, I think Twenty One Savage. I would like to hear it. DMX on a on a dark Metro Boomin beat. Metro Boomin, Twenty One yeah. Savage, DMX. <laughs> that's it. There's somebody that's listening right now that's like, "Fuck no, fuck yeah." I kind of think that would be. I think I think that would be kind of hot. I'm not gonna. I, th- I honestly believe that it, that is that is very compatible. Right. Like, the, you know, whether they believe, like, well, they don't even sound like, they don't have to sound alike. Then it's You're not supposed styles. to sound They're alike. They're not supposed to sound That's alike. That's the point. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you have to, and it's just to, another thing too, old school, new school, same type of, just you know feeling or whatever. Honest, right. You know, you know 21 Savage, I know a lot of people like, don't like 21 Savage because yeah. they think he's a mumble rapper, but 21 Savage doesn't far sound like, though. he doesn't sound like the other guys though. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Far, he sounds me, like him, from himself. Mumble, from a person who, is does not like mumble rap. Right. Far from mumble rapping is Twenty One Savage. Right. And I said that like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. But he's far. He's far from it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not mumbling. Right. It's it's to me. I I hear everything he's saying. I hear everything he's saying too. I understand him clearly. Right. There's enunciation in his rawness. Right. <laughs> and shit. He, He's not mumble rap. Bring fucking DMX back. Bring him back. New school. New school. If you're listening to this, bring fucking DMX back. At least get a 21, or not 21, at least get a Metro Boomin and DMX mixtape going. Right. At least get that going. Of course. Yeah, but shout out to DMX though. We love this song, man. Hell yeah. yeah. I was like, shit, it was great to hear you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you're still working on shit on the low, bring it out. No, he is. Bring it out. Bring it out. Man, a sad day in the uh, hip hop world and the podcasting world. Yeah, uh, very much so. Uh, a couple of days ago, Combat Jack passed away uh, from his fight with uh, with cancer. cancer yeah. uh, for those of y'all that may not have known, this might have been a shock to some of y'all. If y'all listen to any of the podcasts or even like the Breed Idiots with Charlemagne, and you know, you heard. Um, uh, uh, I forget his name. I can't think of his name, but he always comes on there on the Brady Idiots and he talks about, he, they talked about Combat Jack and what he's going through. You know what I'm saying? So if you've been listening, if you listen to the Loudspeakers Network podcast, mm-hmm. this isn't really a shock to you. Yeah. Um, but it still is kind of shocking though because yeah. you kind of want people to fight through that. Yeah, you, you want to hear the good story of, oh, they they, they survived. They beat cancer. Right. You know, everyone's looking for that story and then when it doesn't happen, it, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, cancer it really is. Cancer it's cancer is one of those man. things, man, that like if it's you don't horrible. catch it early, like it's affected every family probably in, in the world. Right. You know, in some way. Like my dad had my dad had to fight cancer. Yeah, you know my grandma saying? passed away from cancer, you know. Right. And, and I've had family friends pass away, you know, from cancer and I mean it's it's a it's a bitch. I mean yeah. Fuck cancer. Yeah, fuck cancer straight right. up. I mean, I got a, I got one of the wristbands that says that. Right. Fuck cancer. I have one. Right. And yeah, straight you know, up. Combat Jack, uh, he's been in like the hip hop world and in the culture and was kind of one of the first people hip hop wise to like dive into the, uh, the podcasting world, uh, head first and figured it out before a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that's like doing podcasts now, including us. I mean, we got a little bit. We got we got a little bit of time in the game doing mm-hmm. it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that just came in that that weren't into. They even didn't know what a podcast was. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And a lot of people like literally Still were opened to up day. To, to this day. There's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's crazy because like what they did with like Loudspeakers Network. Um, you know, Combat Jack kind of being somewhat of a catalyst to that. It literally opened it up the hip hop culture to podcasting. Oh, yeah. As Open well as opened up open doors to other people to step into the world too. You straight know what I'm up, saying? Straight so up. You, you know, you got to give. You got to you take your hat off to him. Straight up, you got to take your hat off. I don't got a hat to take off. Well, I had the hat. That's why I had to do it. <laughs> you got to take your hat off. To right, him. right, straight right. Up. I don't think that there it's would be like on. a like a like a 
hip hop culture and podcast not now yeah like it is now uh, if it wasn't for Combat Jack I, you know what I'm saying? I agree yeah. I mean the hip hop world is still catching on to podcasting yeah it, but this huge kind of influx has happened is literally because of you know most likely because <laughs> of pioneers Combat like him Jack. oh yeah yeah straight up I mean <laughs> it, it's, it's sad to see that I mean because it affects not only hip hop but it affects you know the podcast industry as well right like, it's it's a lot of people that are that that are impacted by this, you know, that you didn't even know him, but you know that he's open door, he paved the way. Right. You know, and you know. He's part of the internet that. the internet yeah. hip hop culture, man. Straight up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I remember the first time that I heard about it, it was like an interview that I seen him do uh, with somebody and I didn't even know what was going on. You know, I didn't know too much about podcasts and I kinda overlooked it. And I got into like a different side of podcasting because yeah. I was in I don't know. I think I started listening to podcasts probably like maybe five, five years ago, mm-hmm. I believe. And I started listening to stuff, you know, like more business related type stuff, marketing and stuff like that. That's how I got it. I was listening to people like Pat Flynn and business stuff, Joe, John Lee, John Lee Dumas and all that kind. I was yeah. into that world first. And even when I was like, I want to start a podcast, you know, I was in this world and they're like, Oh, you should do this. You do, do that. And I was just like, nah, it's just, this doesn't really fit. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't until recently. After seeing what the hip hop culture did to podcasts, when I was like, "All right, I think I found like what we're gonna do for a podcast." You know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Oh yeah. oh yeah, I got you. Right, so I gotta tip that. You know, tip tip the cap over to, to oh, yeah. Combat Jack. It happens. It happens. Uh, that's how it happens. I mean, someone opens the door and you kind of feed off of it, and yeah, and and <clears throat> we are a product of that. Right. So we really we, are. We, we we pay our respects. Right. Yeah. Rest in peace, man. Yeah. Straight Rest in up. peace to uh, Combat, Combat Jack. Jack. If y'all have, y'all should just go listen to, you know, that the, those previous podcasts. He's done stuff with like J Cole, you know, mm-hmm. LL Cool, J, pretty much anybody that 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 oh, yeah. has come out and rap has been on the Combat Jack show. Oh yeah, old and new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so. He's yeah. definitely a pioneer. Right. <laughs> I, I when I listen to the J Cole episode, I learned so much about from just J Cole and like his, you know, him coming up and you know what he dealt with that I hadn't heard before. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You just hadn't heard that kind of what he was saying. You talking about intimate conversations with people that you that you know. You don't really, you know, when you hear, you know, you watch these interviews and stuff on, on radio and on TV. They're very short. It's just kind of to the point. So tell them about your album, man. You know, and, and maybe they it might find like a little tidbit that was new or whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. podcasting would like let you go deep, like you're having a real oh, yeah. conversation, it's far in depth. Things you know? come out that have never come out before. It's, it's literally it's it's like it's kicking it with. With someone on a regular day, right, and just having an everyday conversation, right, you know, but it's organized, organized, right, you know, and but then when it's action, you're just having your everyday uh, conversation, right, you know, and and when when that happens, you don't know what's going to come out because at that point, when someone gets comfortable with you, you you have good quality, uh. uh Conversations. conversations to where you can I mean people feed on that they love that because it's real shit you right know, people shit that you might have not even known about someone because they opened up because they're that comfortable right he's one of those guys that would get you there you right. know because that easy to talk to you know right and he, he knew what he was doing I mean he's a pioneer a master of of the craft right <laughs> you know that sucks so, man I really was yeah. hoping that Combat Jack was gonna make it out of that man Oh I'm yeah, like, I was hoping the battle he could have beat it right. definitely. Shouts out to Combat Jack, man. Shouts out to the Lost Speakers Network. Shouts out to hip hop culture as a whole, man. Yeah, shout out, saying? shout out, and rest in peace, man. R.I.P. This week for the culture, mm-hmm. a lot of people have have come out with mixtapes where they're rapping other people's uh, beats. Re- Okay, uh, take it hey, back. Hey, that's hey, that's how it used to be. <laughs> right, right, right. That's really how it was. Uh, that's what it was. Your boys. It was an art. Joiner Lucas. Huh. King Los. King Los. Weezy F Baby have all wrapped on the bank account B. So we figured out why not talk about who had the better a bank account comparison. verse. A little comparison. Between. A versus. Right. Uh, triple versus triple versus this is actually pretty hard you know what i'm saying and a lot of people you know like would say off top lil wayne had the better verse 
Some people say Jordan way. Lucas had the better race. Some, some people, people say, say King, King Lucas. Yeah. I want to know your personal thoughts on this. We're going to put you on the spot early. You can put me on the spot early because I, I already know who I feel killed it harder. Right. And it is Jordan Lucas. You feel like Jordan Lucas did? Jordan Lucas killed it harder. I got to say that I think I think that Jordan Lucas went the hardest, he, too. He, Just the way he flipped everything. Yeah, the way he flipped everything and the way he, he stuck to he stuck to me to the program. He stuck to just killing it. Where right. There was points on King Los's and Lil Wayne's where it was like, almost like I said before, where it was a filler of just a little blank or just a little stutter, just a little hat, just a little... Right. Something that could have been more rap. Right. You know, and... Well, I kind of feel like Lil Wayne, like, rapped. Oh, like, he had rap. his beginning where he was kind of singing rap. or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, Lil Wayne which some of it's kind of funny, it. though. He snapped into it. Yeah, when the beat kicked it. in, he did kind of just go. Yeah, and then he snapped you know into it. I was yeah, actually kind of impressed by Lil Wayne because... You know, Little Wayne is Wayne, seen as somebody that's kind of fallen off. Yeah. You know I gave Wayne second place. I gave Wayne second place. Oh, whoa, it's getting slightly it's over getting King real. Lose. It's, slightly over King Lowe's. It's but getting I, real. I, I in did here. give it to Little Wayne though, right, right, right. slightly. Now it is getting real, ain't it? I, you know what? I got. I'm, I'm not gotta, really a Wayne fan no more. It's funny because I'm not. I'm not as much as a Wayne fan either. But I do got to give it to Wayne. Some of the shit do not as even talk about it. Wayne that might, might not have been be writing his own verses. Yeah. So who knows? But who knows? there was a couple of lines in there from Little Wayne where I was, I thought where he, he had a couple of really funny lines. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in there, mainly the the uh, which was kind of the hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, talking about he's in the mansion. I still ain't still ain't. Uh, what do you say? Showed it to your family. Some shit yeah, like that. It was. Yeah, he said still ain't invited your family. I ain't saying invite your family. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> respectful as shit. But or the line where he was like. Saying that uh, uh, his bitch is taller than him, but it's okay. We still six nine. Yeah. yeah, we still six nine. I thought that was actually a. He had a couple of, like clever, uh, very clever lines in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Whereas I think King Los, though King Los is, he's a dope lyricist and he has oh, dope he lines. Oh yeah. I don't feel like he really, you know, compared to these guys. I don't feel like it was really veteran, a little more. Well, I wouldn't say Jordan Lucas is more of a veteran as Wayne is, but Jordan Lucas is just more. He's writing, Jordan Lucas he's is riding hungry a higher right. wave yeah, he, right he's, now. He's, he's, he sounds extremely wave. hungry. I think right he's now. on a tsunami. Honestly, right. it's not a wave. But Los he's hasn't a, really had his his real full time to shine yet. You know what I'm saying? So there's still hunger with Los. Yeah. I just feel like Jordan Lucas is like buzzing. He's like, oh, I'm just oh gonna, yeah, I'm, just, I'm taking everybody's heads off, and, he, and he's you know going on every beat, right? And going in on every beat. He's been our artistic ignorance. For times. multiple times, so it's like that's just where he's at. That's why I mean, I, I heard the other two, and I honestly was, I, I was, I was hoping to hear someone go harder than him because I was thinking if someone goes harder than him, I'm gonna fucking flip my top. I'm gonna, I'm right. fucking my head might blow up. Like right. I wonder what they'll say if they actually go harder than him. And I was just like, okay, they both didn't go harder than him, but Lil Wayne did go in better than I, you know, than than. Than the Wayne that I've previously yeah been he hearing. definitely went in like way like, better than I was expecting yeah I was you know like, what I'm saying because yeah. Wayne definitely hasn't been where you know where he where he used to be right. on a lot of people's radars you know and you know and some people he's still the greatest rapper alive you know yeah. to a lot people, of people you know, so I mean it, it depends but Lowe's, I don't want to say that take this from Lowe's like he's, like all. he's trash or whatever because he was killing it. too because he was it. he was hitting you know he was hitting the, the, the double time that, speed the way he did that saying? French shit yeah, you, that's the thing about Lowe's too like when you're I listening to Lowe's it. if you're not paying attention a lot of shit will go right over, over your head. head oh yeah you know what I'm saying you kind of I don't want to say you got to be educated but like you kind of got to be aware of things of what, yeah you got to understand you know like, like, like you the concept be, right you got to be more in tune you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to be broader minded yeah. when you're listening to Los. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, when he did the French thing where he was talking about do. It's like listening to Lupe. So, you got to you gotta right. have your mind ready to take something that you're not going to get from mumble rap. You of, know? Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Whereas, I feel like, uh, like, Jordan Lucas, he wasn't really coming with, like, deep metaphors like that. Nah, he was just coming with just, just killing it. wordplay, lyricism, style. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He's just kind of flipping things around. You know what I'm saying? Doing his thing or whatever. Just doing, doing different styles. You right. know, snapping here, doing a different type of snap where you got a different type of, you know, breathing method for his fast rapping and shit. And he was just, if we went with just like it. who was the more clever one, it would probably have to be Wayne, Los, and then yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it would have to be. Clever wise. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'd agree. Cause, that would probably cause, be my, cause my the way they, and you know, to me, honestly, I'm, me personally, I think it would actually be clever wise. 
I'd go with Lois Wayne, then Joyner, personally. Okay, I can see I would that too. Actually go that's, with, that's a, that's I was argument. about to say it's a toss up, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm going for him. I'm going for well. Okay, King so Lose first, everybody cause... had the everybody had their one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight part of the of the shit. Yeah, Joyner was. Oh my goodness, he did his. Uh, Little Wayne's I thought was more interesting because I'm, I'm when you hear everybody's going on it, you kind of want to hear how they're going to flip that, right? <laughs> and when he says I got one, two, three, four, five, eight bank accounts, bank accounts. which kind of like. Switched the whole shit because you know it, it like completely yeah. made the whole thing like well damn <laughs> yeah. you're talking about this is the numbers you have right. you're saying this is how many this bank, like bank accounts, accounts I got has. yeah and, and then, then the main account and then the main account that, <laughs> that you know what I'm saying uh, that, yeah. I mean he keeps I thought it was, I thought it was, it was I like that I like, I like that just gonna say look I'm the biggest dog I did like you know I like how he did that yeah uh, whereas Los was just like. I think he just wanted to stomp somebody. I did. He's like, I, I, I got one, two, three, four, I, five, six. I'm just gonna stomp you. My, I stomp you out and shit. I ain't trying to start shit, but I almost felt like he was kind of taking slight jabs at joining. Hot take, hot take, hot take, hot take. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, but I really, I mean, we talked about it. And, and you, might, right. you might even agree a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like, I wish but, I could do some sort of effect on the video where it's just like, yeah, it's like do, do, all do, do, red. Do, 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 like, you know what I'm saying? I take a learn. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So shit. you basically feel like fucking. I feel like King Los is trying to make his, like, make his claim to where he thinks he belongs. You know, like, he. I believe he is, you know, saying like, "Hey, don't leave me out." Right. Like y'all are quick to leave me out of this uh, conversation of dope lyricism, and uh, right. he's like, "I believe y'all are doing this after I." He did gets it. left out a lot, a lot and he too. says, "I believe," I, you know, he's like, "Y'all are my sons. I did this first. Y'all, y'all sound like me." Mm. You know, that's how he said it. Like y'all sound like me, and it's kind Why of that snapping. Hey, I'm just saying it. That's what Why are you trying to start like, a beef between not, Jordan Lucas I'm and not, King Los? I'm not trying. We don't to need this. I don't. We need, need to do a track together. I don't want this. Yes, <laughs> I'd love a track together. You know, we're talking about Joiner with Ritz. I'd love to see Joiner and King Los straight yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see that. I don't want them to beef. I'm just saying, like, it sounded like he was maybe trying to make his claim by right. saying, "Hey, don't leave me out. You think you don't want to get snapped? I've been doing this, and it feels like you are imitating me. That's right. how he feels, and and that's not really taking a jab at him. It's kind of saying that, hey, if you're gonna sound like me, at least pay, give me my dues, and like like bring me into the fucking pull me on the wave. Right. Like, I mean, that ain't no. She's right here. She's right here trying to start a, a battle. Nah. Nah, yeah, if you feel like I'm trying Listen. to start something, then fuck it. <laughs> Yeah. You're the media, and you're doing what the, they did with East Coast West Coast for Pac and Big. You're doing this right fucking now. Okay, this is why people fucking hate the media. Yeah, uh, it's a hot. No, take. It's a hot. It's take. definitely a hot it's take. It's a hot take. Because hey, maybe y'all up. listen to y'all, y'all, and y'all mm-hmm. listen to y'all say the same. Y'all might think the same thing of here because that's honestly that's the take I took because it's it's after Joyner Lucas's version. Right. You know, well, because, I, I I gotta look I gotta look at the timing on that because right. Lowe's came out as makes it like the 16th of December. I feel like this bank account verse came out kind of recent, so I don't I don't know who came out first. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. Who either, knows? So. Lowe's might have had that one in the bag. All that right. might just destroy my whole kind of, my whole my whole. That's my what whole I'm saying. Shit That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You ain't giving out high takes, yeah. but if it did come out after, it feels like it. But if it didn't, then fuck what I just said. Right. <laughs> well, but shout out, shout out to everybody on there. You know, what yeah. shout out to Joyner. Jo- shout out to Joyner. Shout out to King Lowe's. And shout out to Wayne. All of them. They all killed it. Your boys. I'm adding a blunt to this. One one goes by his real name, I believe. <laughs> the other is named after a liquor. <laughs> Jose Cuevo and your boy Travis Scott have come out with their long-awaited uh, collaborative project. Give me Cuevo! Jack, Jack Huncho, Huncho Jack. Mama! Mama! <laughs> Me. Uh, I, you know, a lot of people was waiting on this. You know what I'm saying? In the in the culture to an extent. No. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people like Travis Scott. A lot of people. Quavo's hot right now. Um, <clears throat> I was spe- definitely expecting the beats to sound kind of hard. I was definitely expecting the trap sound. And I feel like we kind of got that with this. Oh, definitely got some trap sound. We, we got some dope-ass beats. Right. Some dope-ass production. Which I, I don't think was shit. all was, was all Travis Scott. I think it was other people. Yeah, okay. there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, they had different sounds, right? But I mean, not to say producers don't do different sounds, but I'm just saying, like, it didn't sound like it was all Travis Scott. But I was feeling the production. Let's start with the intro. The intro kind of threw me for a loop because it literally started off 
an old school sample, and I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, right, okay, we're not gonna go too trap. You know what I'm saying? Y'all coming with the I'm old school that samples shit too. I kind I of you, like I, know, I know you was feeling that. Shit I was. I mean, I'm, with that, I'm kind that, of, that grown up. What kind old of old school heads? Vi- old school vibe. Are we old heads? Yeah. Uh, middle, kind of middle old heads. <laughs> middle old heads. Yeah, we're we're getting there. Um, but yeah, I I was uh, I was drawn to that. I was like, oh, okay, nice way to start it off with the with the old school sample. Yeah, yeah. Um, modern slavery. Modern slavery. Yeah, That's what it was, yeah, yeah. I definitely I, I like the track. Yeah, uh, I like the track. But to me, like the first, the first like couple tracks on here were kind of they were okay. They were not, they weren't, you know, like bad, but they were just like kind of okay. Then probably around like the fourth track, we kind of start to get into them and like their real dynamic together. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where they're like really like having fun and they're making what I would expect them from them, yeah, to oh, yeah. make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I enjoy lyrically on this album, lyrics wasn't too great, Boy, but great. I do like there Quavo's. Was some, there was some bars in there. There, though. there was. I like. I like Quavo's um, sneak bars references. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because he's kind of a younger dude. You know what I'm saying, but he kind of makes references to the stuff that you know. what I'm saying I would. I would that you'd understand that I would understand. Yeah. You know oh yeah. Saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. He definitely. Uh, he had his moments. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah I was like. Can't just write you out. Can't just be all about Offset. Right, right. right. I see Quavo has a little claim. Quavo has claim star power. It. You can't, yeah, you can't he has deny a claim it. for it. It's like, hey, I'm here too. Right. It's not all about Offset. Right. Yeah, but overall, I mean, I really, I enjoy the album. No, it's something you could just jam. You know, right. Just like, pretty much doing anything. You could just jam that shit. The beats are going to, you know, vibe to the beats. You know, the lyrics, like you said, aren't like full blown, like, gonna blow you away but it, it, it's something that you could just jam and listen to you right, know what i'm saying they have a good they have a good <clears throat> dynamic they really do they do i was i wasn't expecting you know what i'm saying some of the some of the stuff that was actually happening on on the album you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. uh uh i i kind of felt like travis scott too like you know he he kind of let quavo do his thing but at the same time travis scott was out here doing his thing too oh yeah I think, like, they're, like, speaking on that, it kind of, there were moments that, like, by, by you saying that, it made me th- realize and remember that there were moments that I felt like Travis Scott held back a little, like, didn't really go full blown Travis Scott. Yeah, I kind of felt like he, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he kind of he held back be. as well, too. Yeah, right. I felt like he held back a little bit and, like, kind of, maybe it was like letting Quavo shine type shit. Like, yeah. he had, maybe, maybe Quavo just, they both wrote something, Quavo spit a shit and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna just let you go ahead and do that. Right, I ain't gonna try to overdo it like you. Well, you <laughs> I think Travis Scott probably directed things a little bit more because, yeah. uh, you know, like to be honest with you, I I never I didn't like uh, the Migos and the like. You know, when they came out Versace Versace, I was like, yeah, it's all right, but I wasn't really into Migos at that point. It wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't either. I, I really wasn't into a lot of. I wasn't into Young Thug. I wasn't into Rich Homie Quan. It wasn't until I heard them working with Travis Scott where I was like, all right, mm. let me check out Young Thug a little more. Let me check out Rich Homie okay. Quan. Let me check out the Migos. The production. Yeah. One of the first songs that I actually, when I when I was like, I kind of like Quavo was uh, this, I think it was called This Side or, uh, uh, I forget. It was it was on um, uh, one of Travis Scott's. <laughs> you wish Todd songs. was here. Yeah, I wish Todd was fucking here right now <laughs> so he could fucking help us out. But uh, no, there was a song there that had Quavo on it and I was like... Uh, Okay, I kind of rock with this a little bit, and it was, you know, I just, but I, at that time period, I wasn't really into Migos. Yeah. I'm a little bit more into them now. I can't pay attention to them more now. But I, I think Quay, I, I think uh, Travis Scott knows how to direct uh, some of these artists. Oh yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, um, feel that. I think probably I that. too that you know, uh, like there's talks of like who's going to be executive producing the next Migos album. So they kind of put out like it's going to be a surprise. I honestly it's gonna be believe Travis that it's going to be. It could be. It could be Travis Scott. Okay. It could be Kanye West. Uh, I honestly uh, believe that it might be a Kanye West. Okay. Okay. Um, executive producing happening here, but uh, we'll see on that. But what I mean, what did you give this project on a scale of uh, one to ten? I give it. I give it an eight. Strong eight. Strong eight. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. I give. I give it a strong eight as well. Hmm. The beats on here was was fire. Yeah. Some of the songs were were pretty were pretty fire too. I like the uh, yeah, motorcycle patches. I like the the Huncho Jack Saint. Yeah, it has, it has <clears throat> replay value. 
There's definitely a lot of songs here that got replay value. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? I definitely, I mean, that that Dubai shit with, with Offset. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just the beat. Offset didn't really go all in like I, like I kind of wanted. Like I was thinking Offset could have could have killed it, but he didn't kill it as much as I thought he would have. But it, at the same time, it's Quavo shit. So maybe you know Quavo got to stand out a little bit more. Right. You know? But you know, Moon Rock went hard. Moon Rock definitely went hard. Yeah, I like Moon Rock. I mean, y'all out here smoking moon rock. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, that shit just was. I mean, you can let that shit run through. You really can. Right, right. I mean, it's not really a, a bad album to where you can be like, I got to skip this. I mean, it's something that you can literally. There's a just couple let play. skippable, you know, tracks on here that don't really sound like they're bringing the a game. It's just kind of like filler. You know what I'm saying? But, but then there's definitely tracks on here that's really, really strong. Yeah. Well, to there. me, it's filler that you can just let it play. Right. right. It kind of, it's like. It's not far from to me. It's like it's not far from what they have, but it, I know what you're saying that's like that's why they get the eight, right? But it's well a part of it. But they 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 kind of let it. It kind of works. Like right. it kind of just it helps flow through still regardless. I mean, you can you can hear the songs that are weaker, you right? Know? But it but to me, it flows through. Yeah, it ain't bad. Right. It ain't something that you're like, well, that's definitely I gotta you you can skip it, but you could also let it play, right? So. Yeah, man. Shout out, shout shout out, out to him. Cause shout it, out to to Quavo and uh, Travis Scott. It, it was not. It was definitely not a bad a bad duo. Yeah. Definitely not. I think they definitely complement each it's other. What you would they expect. Could work, they could work. <laughs> I think they could work together a lot more, and like they can come out with some fire ass shit. Even right. and get even get even better. Right. Together. I agree. Yeah. So shouts out to Quavo and uh, Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah. Your boy. Some call him a king. Recently, he wants to be known as a goat. That's right. He did want to be known as the goat. Yeah. He said, for now on, call me the goat. Your boy King Los came out with Moore's Bars, mm. which is his second mixtape in like a quick, quick, quick span. Yeah. Like, like... We were going to review uh, <laughs> his goat mixtape. Yeah. And then today, Moore's Bars came out. Today. Today. Like and we're like, ah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, we're, we're. I literally thought that I I thought this was what we were supposed to review, right. and I thought, oh shit, I was looking at the wrong one. Right, right. Like there was it was late, it didn't load right or right, some right, shit, right. you know. So you know, it's this one. It's it is this one. This is the one we're doing, which is actually today. a little bit better because this one has a little bit more of the original music on here. Yes, it does. So I think this is kind of more of a prequel to his new album that's going to come out. I believe yeah. January the twenty fourth. Well, that's what the day was about. Not to say we didn't listen to that other mixtape, though. I definitely listened to the other mixtape too. So I, I, I didn't hear it all, but I heard a lot. I heard a good chunk of it. Yeah, yeah. He was he was going in on that mixtape. Yeah, he did. Um, and but this one is like more of a, more. Uh, I guess you you would say his original original. It's original songs. shit. Yeah, right. it's definitely original. His beats, shit that he's acquired. Right. Yeah. You know? What did you think of this uh, this mixtape for? Uh, Mr. I liked King it. Oh, I liked it. If it, bars like you gotta sum it up bars right who has very impressive was he was he on a two year hiatus the last mixtape I believe came out 2014 wow yeah so he has been in the background just people well no he no 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 my bad excuse me he, he did have an album come out uh I think it was God War Money yeah God Money War something like that something I can't remember out. which I've actually heard which is, is actually pretty dope uh, project. That came out in 2015. My That's bad. Yeah. That came out in 2015. Okay. So, yes, yeah, two, two years. Two two year year hiatus, yeah. Yeah. It's been two years since we've heard anything from Mr. King Lowe's, and he's just coming back so with said, Avengers right now. With Avengers, yeah. Right. Because, I mean, he's, he even said it. He's like, I just was in the background watching. Right. Know, basically watching what was going on. He's like, and I'm back to fucking <laughs> to wreak havoc. Right. You know, and just and show you how it's done. Right. You know. he's He's had... You know, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a struggle with I know like with Losa trying to get out there, you know what I'm saying? Just because uh, he's not extremely popular, but I know a lot of lyricists respect respect his flow. Like you can't not respect his. Flow. How about I say that you, you can't know what I'm not respect it? I mean, fool got bars. He's I mean, got his wordplay. His wordplay is nasty, nasty, but you gotta pay yeah. it. Sometimes you like you really gotta pay attention. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where you're like, it's it's very Lupe level. 
Definitely. It's I can like, tell you this like, is bring it me. back. It's that bring it back shit. It's like, hold on, I gotta hear this again. Yeah, let me let me let hear me, that one. Did I what did he say? Did I just did he say what I just think he just said? Yeah. Hold up. Did I catch that right? That's the kind of rap that we grew up off of. You know what I'm saying? That's that that's rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? To me, it's like you have to stimulate the brain. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta fucking uh, make that shit. You gotta th- be able to think and, and and make people think. Yeah, make people think and and make people uh listen to it multiple times before they hear it and really understand, really understand it, it all the way. Which I don't know if that works that's, in twenty in twenty seven to go on twenty two. I, I don't anymore. know if that's like it, a it don't. Because people are, everything moves so quick and it's yeah. just like in and out, in and out, in and out that you could like listen to him and then be like, oh, okay, cool. And then well, pass it on and miss so much well, fucking shit. It works for us. You know, it works for people like us right. who appreciate Well, our brains that. are trained to be able to pick up and appreciate that, that, that yeah. type of shit. Oh, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. we can't, even if we, even if we just like one and done him, we'll probably catch majority of what majority, he's saying definitely. because that's the way our brains are. Oh, trained. yeah. You know I heard saying? a lot of that shit. And that's why he, I know he has bars. Like, he, he, he does, killing that shit. The, the track on here does uh, Pac-Man, which isn't, it isn't a super great track, but the metaphor in here was dope. Just the way he kind of played the metaphor. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, another thing about him too is he's, he's very versatile. Like, he can do pretty much anything. Yeah, he kind of harmonize. You know what I'm saying? And shit. Yeah. And he can, which he, I think he showed more on the mixtape, you know, but, right. but, he showed a little bit on here, and he, he definitely. I mean, well, this is when things get talent. This is where things get like kind of crazy because on the mixtape, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, when you're trying to mix songs, it's a little bit harder to kind of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. To you know what I'm saying, like to hone that and make a, a song using all those different types of talents at one time, it's really hard. A mixtape, you can just you can just have fun and do whatever you want to do. But when you talking about making an album, you're making a song, you're trying to sell it to no. a, the populace. Yeah. No. You know what I'm saying? Things get a little bit hard. And I could tell that some of these tracks are, you know, probably throwaways. You know what I'm saying? That uh, you know, he, he probably just made just, you know, out of out of the sheer fun of of rapping. Yeah. Um, but I, I believe that when he comes out like with that. his next album, oh, it's going to have some fucking heat. There's going to be some heat on it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could just tell just by cuz I'm like there's no way you're going to just drop this there's gonna and be this people, not be throwaways. There's going to be people who question their their further career in rap. Like, I think if he fucking drops, <laughs> but I think he can drop. Right, right, Like, cause th- this is on some hot, some high level shit right here. Right. And it feels like throwaways at times. Right. But it still is like when you listen to the bars, not necessarily the track, but the bars, what he's spitting still. I mean, people in whack tracks, you know what I'm saying? Tracks that are not necessarily great tracks. There's still some, there's still some gold in there. You know what I'm saying? Of course. I mean, and diamonds in the rough type. Yeah, shit. Yeah, these, like, these, this happened in certain parts of his. Of and this, that uh, happened on his shit, definitely. Right. Yeah, it happened on this shit. Where it's like, where, all right, you can tell this isn't like his finest work, but still, it you can tell like he he can't turn off the concepts, the metaphors. Yeah. He can't, you can't ever, he can't ever turn that off. Yeah, you know what I'm still, saying. No matter what, he's still delivering that. Definitely still delivering. And, what did you and, What did you think about the track he did with Hobson and uh, Worst of Five Nights? I was about to say that shit went hard, right? Yeah, that's uh, uh, was it everyone something? Uh, everyone's a everyone's, everyone's a, a bitch. bitch. Yeah. Everyone's a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone's a bitch. Yeah, that shit. I like that shit. I mean, right. fucking Royce did his thing. You know he's gonna have fun and do he his. Did his he's thing. gonna he's gonna climb. Hobson Royce is a funny thing. rapper too, by the way. Fuck yeah, he's very funny. I've always found him very like comedic, but in a great way because right. he, he uses it very well right. with his concept. I like how he kind of uses everybody it. in his flow too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he used Hobson's eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over here making well, Hobson's eyes a punchline. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, no, That's I thought I thought dope. it was dope. I thought yeah, it was dope. he brought Jazzy Faye into yeah. the scene. Right, I was like, what Jazzy right. Faye? Yeah, and it felt like Jazzy Faye was really trying to grasp onto the new age. Like you can feel that in him. Like you can't not. Yeah, you have to run. You know what I'm it. saying you have to run. With Even Los has like it where he's kind of using some of the new. Oh, oh he definitely language. did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. shit or whatever. You know what I mean? But I, you know, I think that uh, he's he's. I think he's a dope lyricist, man. This this is gonna show. This just shows what he what he's capable of doing. The last track, man. Oh yeah, yeah. January twenty fourth, twenty seventeen. Right. Yeah. I mean that that right. What you were just saying. It just shows you what he's capable of right, right, right. there. That track alone. I mean, he kind of ended it with like. This is what I, is what uh, the future looks like, right? Like as long as you're gonna jam me, you're gonna hear some of this, and it's about to be, it's about to get better, right? 
that's what that's what I took from that shit. And, right. Yeah, he he definitely delivered, even though we had he had those hiccups. You know right. What I'm saying? Right. Uh, he and still delivered. Just just so everybody knows too, like we literally had to like crunch this review in. Fuck yeah. You see what I'm saying? I mean, we should we, we you know we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to this more. Only, but from what I heard, you know what I'm saying? I listened to it twice through, you know what I'm saying? And I tried to pick up everything that I could. I had a few tracks m- multiple times, right. but like two times, but yeah. I didn't hear the whole thing twice. But yeah. there was a few that I did go back to because I was like, oh, I want to hear that one again because so I kind of want to double ch- Just so you know, this review isn't heard. like a, f- isn't as, as, as a complete review it's as not it could a, be. Yeah, it's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We may have missed. literally dropped a few hours ago. <laughs> Let's literally dropped We may have a few missed some things, ago. okay? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's we already like I said we already had the the other mixtape in the bag, but then which came out yeah about two weeks ago yeah, yeah yeah came out about two weeks ago and but almost two weeks ago. but literally this, this one just came out so we was just like oh, we got we got to do this one yeah yeah so uh but based off of what I heard I gotta go ahead and rate this a nine even though that I feel like there's some throwaways on here yeah and it's not like super quality and maybe I missed a lot of shit I'm pretty sure I probably missed some shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause he's that type of rapper. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure Lupe probably listens to King Los. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. But I, I, I kind of feel like that based off what I heard, this is a strong nine. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's definitely going to bring something a little bit later. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't want to sound like you, but yeah, it's a nine. Right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, my drink sound all loud and shit. My bad, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as as it was going at first, I was like, "This this shit is a 10. I was going with a ten as it was going, and and I like to state that, yeah, a lot of like when I listen to an album, I like to start. I'm like almost like Michelle, so you like the dangerous go- mind status. Yeah. I start off with everyone Eight. has a ten. No, everyone has a ten to begin with. Right, and as you as I listen to it, I deduct. As I don't That's like, you. Okay. you know, it's like, well, well yeah, I'm you taking right. you away a little bit, taking a little away. Right. So everyone starts off at a 10. You're allowed to keep that 10, like Michelle said. Right. You know what I'm saying? Michelle Pfeiffer, she was like, you can get that, you can keep that 10, but you got to work for that 10. Right. You know? And that's how I rate it. And it started off at 10, but with those hiccups, it, it just dropped, dropped a couple notches, you know? Right, right. Went from nine to nine and a half to only nine. And I was just like, yeah, but it, quality wise, it is still bumping. That lyrically, shit still, still flows. It's, lyrically, it's a 10. To me, well, I say it nine. That's why nine and a half is not. I wanted to give it a ten with that right. lyricism Just, that he had. Right. But, but I guess all, all around, you know, what I'm saying when you really, you know, like piece it together, it's a strong, definitely a strong nine. So shout yeah. out to King Loves. I feel you though. Right. I feel you though with that whole, you know, like it, could, it, 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 it. It was on the verge of being more. Right. Slightly. It, right. Is, it just you could tell the potential that's gonna go oh, into yeah. this next. That's album, why. So. That's why I'm, I'm very. Eager to hear that shit. Shouts to King Los, man. He, he's hustling. That's right. two. That's two mixtapes. Back to yeah, back. Pretty quick. Back, back to back. Yeah. yeah. Your boy. Some people call him Wayne. Some people call him Wheezy. Some people call him Wheezy F Baby. Please call, say the baby. I call him Lil Wayne. Yeah. Others say Tunchi. Some people call him Dwayne Carter. Probably Some say is, Mr. Carter. Probably, probably Miss Sita. Calls him that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your boy, your boy Lil Wayne no. has came out with his mixtape Christmas Day, which we had to cram in today too. <laughs> That's uh, uh, if you heard the uh, last section, which I'm sure you did. Uh, right. right. That's why we're on. A, that's that's why we're quick to cram these in, like a few hours to hear these last two. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's that was a struggle. That's not gonna happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, but we figured we had to talk Let's about this not. shit uh, today, you know, because <laughs> it's Christmas. It needs Day to now. happen. Yes. Let's give you a gift. Lil Wayne has came out with the sixth installment of his popular series dedication, Dedication Six D Six. Yes, with uh, DJ Drama, Gangsta Grills original. Gangsta Grizzles. Gangsta Grizzles. Copyright infringement. I know, right? I can't even use that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody be like, take the video down. Now. Right. Uh, like, come on, man. We just. You know what? It was actually kind of fun <laughs> hearing like DJ Drama talk his shit. And... It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since yeah. we heard DJ Drama do his thing. Like, yeah. you know? They try to talk thing. shit like me. 
<laughs> it's kind of good. It was nostalgic to hear that. It was definitely nostalgic, and to hear Wayne kind of going in on random beats. On random beats, yeah. That's out right now, the hot beats. You know, it's, it's Little Wayne at his finest. It's the Little Wayne the way his albums are supposed to be. <laughs> oh no shit! Yeah, you know? like well, from at, from After Carter too. Like some people Carter like call his like, mixtapes his classics, and his albums like trash. Yeah, you know that's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of his dedications have been a lot better than his albums that came right. out. Dedication one, two, and two were like my favorite Little Wayne dedications. Do you think it's also because he got to be able to have more freedom on those? <laughs> well, shit, he got all kind of label shit going on. It's like, well, at least I could do this. I shit. Do dedication right, mixtapes and just do what the fuck I want, right? So, yeah, but I, I will better. say that Lil Wayne has definitely been the guy that he's put out some of his best work on these mixtapes. Yeah. And, you know, kind of, I think it kind of ran dry a little quick. You know what I'm saying? A lot quicker than if he would have put that focus and energy into making the best albums that he can make. Mm-hmm. Not to say like all of his albums were trash, but during his dedication time period, some of his dedication shit, it was just better shit than his albums. Oh, yeah. Lyrically. Oh, but yeah. what did you think of this one? Lil Wayne, uh, is he, has he returned to form? Is he back to... At times. At times. Definitely at times. At times. It at was times. like, yes. Right. And then it was like... Eh. So is it when... Then I was like... The, yeah. the, the auto Why? <laughs> was like, but, I was like, come on. Like, I'm Pussy hearing it the, from the beginning. <laughs> Pussy juicy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he... he it started off where I was like, yes, right. this is DJ Drama, Lil Wayne, right. you know, at its finest. Um, this is what Lil Wayne probably wants to do but can't do because of label shit. Yes, this is what we, we need. We want from Lil Wayne, you know. And I, like I said, I'm like a fallen Lil Wayne fan. I'm not even a Lil Wayne fan right now. I'm a so, fallen Lil Wayne fan, So too. I'm like, yes, please yeah, come like, you back gotta, and you gotta, like prove yourself. Yeah, bring your, yeah, yeah. It's like, can you do what I... Loved you for at yes. one point, and, and he, none of what you did to make me not like you. Exactly, which he did both. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. That's the best fucking way end, to put it. End of discussion. Right? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Really, really he, did, he did both because there's there's <laughs> little Wayne is spitting on here, and a lot of, he's he's very clever, like yeah. he, like he always is, and but then he gets into the auto tune Wayne. There's even like a I forget which one it was, but he's. Literally singing like auto tune, and I was just like, "Damn, does he know it's not 2008 anymore?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, move on. <laughs> you gotta move on from that. Not move to say you can't shit. use the auto tune, but the way he was using it was like, it was like from that era. From that era, yeah. Yeah. Which well, some people I, might I feel agree. is nostalgic. I, I mean, I can't, I can't knock that, but I wasn't really digging it. It wasn't nostalgic, yeah, because at that point, I that's that's where I'm thinking Lil Wayne wasn't the Lil Wayne I I wanted anymore. You know, I was right. like, what the fuck? It's like so to hear that again. It's like you're going to the wrong shit. That's right. the wrong old Wayne, you know what I'm saying? But you had glimpses of the Wayne that I did want, you know? Right. And it started off like that. And I'm thinking, yes. And then the the, the first moment auto-tune singing Wayne came right. on, I was, like, oh. I was like, you just just you just you ruined this for yeah. me. Some of it wasn't bad, though. You know what I'm no, saying? No, it wasn't. It was, but the moment it came on, whether I can't even remember if that one wasn't that bad or not, it just it ruined it for me because it just was like, you did it. Right. Like, this could have been, this could have been glorious. <laughs> no, it could have been great right. to him, for him to just do his thing probably what he wants to do, which apparently this is what he wants to do. Right. But I thought that he could have just got onto his rap lyricism, you know, snapping, going in, uh, metaphor, bars. And then he There's just some, went to that and I'm like, and he had that. But yeah. He, that, he, he just, goes in and out of that. Like, yeah. you know, but. When he's, when he's consistent. spitting, when he's really like spitting, when he's like going in, like he's, he's really going in. Oh yeah. It's, and it's clever lines in there too. Like we just kind of hearing like, oh, that was, that was kind of fuck yeah. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some nice lines in there. Then there's some very basic lines in there where it's just like, all right, you could have, you could have did a little better with that line. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You know, well, you could have ex- executed that better. Uh, but there's definitely like a few tracks on here that I, I liked what he did on Make It Count. I actually liked what he did on the, the Roll and Peace song, the yeah. easy, easy Sneakers. Yeah, I yeah. like how he flipped. Code at Black's line with the you, you like, don't even believe in Jesus. You, you like, Why you got Jesus peace? I like how you switched that to you don't even believe in Jesus. You, you like Why that, you got Jesus sneakers? You like that yeah. rock star? Yeah, yeah. With Nicki Minaj? It was all right. It was, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was, it it wasn't wasn't that bad, bad. Uh, for a reunion of them. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the reunion. No, it was interesting here. It's like, so, because he's got Hoodie Boss on, uh, not Hoodie Boss. Is it Hoodie Boss? Uh, he used to be in, listen, if y'all don't know, he was actually, let me tell you how much I know about rap, okay? He was in Dallas, he was known as Big Hood Boss, okay? When he switched it to, to, to Hoodie. So hoodie mellow, hoodie baby, <laughs> hoodie baby. That's what <laughs> it is. Mellow. I, listen, mama ain't a big hood boss. I'm gonna call him hood boss. You know what uh, I'm saying? Hoodie but, baby. All right, yeah. that's. I, I believe that's who that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was on. He did his thing on there. Uh, fucking, fucking. Uh, Todd is fired. Todd is fired. He's on vacation. Yeah, Todd, Todd, fucking dick. Uh, leaves it to us. All right. But I mean, it was all no. It was straight. It wasn't. It wasn't as trash as. It wasn't as great as it could be, but it wasn't as trash as it could be either. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, like, honestly, like, I wanted Vintage Wayne. I got glimpses of it. But at the same time, I thought at one point that I might actually get, I might actually get, uh, like, before I heard it, I was like, I actually might be disappointed with this whole thing. I might start playing it. That's what I was thinking, too. I'm not going to lie to you. fucking disappointed where I'm just like... Fuck no, and and disappointed in DJ Drama for doing it. I right. was thinking at the same time, yeah. which I ain't mad at Drama for doing it because he just fucking you know it's his it's his thing, you know. Yeah, it's his Dedication. Trademark. It's one of his trademarks, one of his best uh, selling uh, mixtapes. Right. So I mean, reels. Yeah. Hey. it's like that, and like I think Trevor yeah. died. So I what had you, mixed feelings going into it. I was thinking like I, I, I don't know too. if it's gonna be great, but I, I kind of want at the same time I was good. wanted I to hear it garbage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was. Interested in hearing it, which That's I think his last one he came out with, I was like, I think it was like No Ceilings 2 or 3, I think it was, yeah. and I was just like, I wasn't really interested in it. No. But this, I was interested in this. No. I was, was literally like, listening to this, right. coming over here for right. this, right. and then listening to it before we started because I, I, I had, that's the time crunch we had of listening to crunch, these yeah. two albums. Yeah. What do you <sighs> give this on a scale of 1 to 10? On a 1 to 10. Yeah. Oh my goodness. On a one to ten, you know, it had hope, and then it it, it fell, it fell, and at times it felt hard. So I was like, ah, I had to give it a seven. Seven? Yeah, I gave it a seven. Some of our ratings are getting a little close because I gave it a seven too. <laughs> it's crazy because, yeah. and I and it was, and honestly, it was, it was between seven and six and a half. Right. But I I I gave him the seven because it just when he went in. He, like he really, really went in. He really went in. But it that was it's like great kind moments, of far but it was moments. wide apart. You know yeah, it was moments. It wasn't it was moments. like consistent. So. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree, seven. man. It, I, I give it. I give it the, the same a seven. You know? No. There's vintage Wayne in here. Then there's the Wayne that like you're like that you people know. were turned off to. Possibly. Well, not, some, people, some people were turned on. Some people, like, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. Giggity. What are you talking but. about? <laughs> He's the best. Yeah, I get it. You know, but. Yeah. I feel like this could have been better, but yeah. there was definitely some strong points. So shout out to Wayne because he still got it, even at his, you know, like, I, like let's, I'm, I'm going to be real. Wayne's been in the game for a long ass fucking time. Yeah. A, a long ass time. Hell yeah. Since he was a fucking kid. What fucking a, couldn't when cuss. He had a, when, he had a fr- when he couldn't cuss. I'm not allowed to cuss. He was like, I don't curse, but in this verse, man, fuck the world. That was, that was first the first time, time we cussing. cussed. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. First time cussing. We were real OGs because we really remember that. We know that. Most people that like Wayne don't even know. We grew up with Wayne, so shit. we know Wayne. That's right. why we understand the greatness that Wayne was and why it's not as it's not what it was. We've he, seen he every he stage of Wayne. Bit. He showed a little bit of it right. in this mixtape, but it just wasn't it wasn't up to par to his greatest dedications. Right. It wasn't. But this wasn't bad though. But shout, shout out to him. It, it wasn't bad. It's still worth listening to. I, 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 I like just to catch those great moments. Like if you want to hear it, but it, like at the moment, I wouldn't say it has a lot of replay value. Right. You know, I some think songs. Some songs. Yeah. Like the thing is, you hear it once, the whole thing, and then you'll find the songs that are worth replaying. Right. You know, but you won't be able to just be like, I'm going to hear the whole thing over. No, you'll find your tracks. Right. You know, that's or your moments, your your verses. You know, but but yeah, shout out to shout Wayne, out to Wayne because he's still you know. Came with the dedication six. It's been a minute since Christmas we got Day. one. Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah. Made us work hard. Made us work real hard. But yeah, shout out to Wayne. Shout we out to Wayne. are at the end of the podcast, yes. baby. We appreciate everybody that is has been listening to the podcast. Trillions, since day one. trillionettes. You, you've been here since day one. Uh, we uh, we hope that you subscribe to the podcast. Yes, please do. Hope you subscribe to us on YouTube. Yes. Uh, we should kick off more video content. Notifications. And, um, yes, hit the notifications. Yes, definitely. Please do that. Uh, 
You got anything else, man, before we get up out of here, man? Merry Christmas to all yeah, all a good night. Say, yeah, man. Merry Christmas to everybody. Yeah, we'll uh, have a Happy Christmas. New Year. You know, because we're not going to catch you until after the New Year. Right. So, have, have a Happy New Year. Y'all be safe. Right. Don't be drinking and driving. Right. Buckle Please don't up. Drink and drive. You know, Please because drink someone drive. is going to be out there drinking and driving. So buckle up so you never know who's going to be out there and you might get in an accident with yeah. not your fault, someone yeah. else's. So don't, don't be a hero uh, and try to be the guy that's like, I'm not letting this person in. He no. might be the drunkard. No. You know what I'm saying? That might run you off the road. No. So, you know, no. you see somebody driving wild, just fall back. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a moment to uh, love family, enjoy everybody, and just, you know, have a good time. Eat good. Have, be, a, have a blessed moment. Be know, blessed. Time. Be 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 blessed. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, man. You don't right. even believe in Jesus. Why you got Jesus <laughs> sneakers? Hey, Merry Christmas, bro. <laughs> Merry Christmas, bro. Uh, yeah, you already know. We're going to be about this thing. No, sing. No, I'm talking about deuces. Smoke some beer. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Truth Be Told podcast. Be sure to subscribe and log on to Chillmatic.com for the latest in underground music, film, fashion, and more.